Given the availability of such uh, vote rigging software and the testimony that has been given under oath of substantial statistical anomalies and gross dis dis differences between exit polling data and the actual tabulated results, do you have an opinion whether or not Ohio election, the Ohio election, presidential election, was hacked? Yes, I would say it was. So in other words, there's absolutely no assurance whatsoever on anything with regard to these machines? Absolutely none. Anybody who trusts electronic voting machines should have their head examined. Many of the voting machine companies are owned and operated by foreign agencies. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. The new world order will be built and end run on national sovereignty eroding it piece by piece will accomplish much more than the old-fashioned frontal assault council on foreign relations we shall have world government whether or not we like it the only question is whether world government will be achieved by conquest or consent paul warburg council on foreign relations and architect of the federal reserve system there's a group that get together internationally and they sort of play God with our money. Do you think that's part of what George Bush said was the one world order? They can't have a new world order uh, only with, uh, you know, a world police uh, military. Right. I think the financial system ultimately is even more important than the guns. The central bankers of the world are working together to create a one world government, a global police state as sinister as anything George Orwell ever wrote about where every person on the planet Earth will have an RFID chip implanted, where the bankers and the governments can monitor every transaction you make. A chip and everybody would be the universal monetary system par excellence, uh, because there'd be no escape from it, and you'd be uh, totally under the control of those who issue the electronic impulses in that chip. Their strategies are being accomplished through the World Trade Organization, the International Monetary Fund, and the Bank for International Settlements, which is the central bank for all the central banks of the world. Most people don't have a clue that these unelected private bankers actually control the governments of the world. They have financed and profited from every war since World War I without concern for humanity. The war in Iraq is an attempt by the Federal Reserve and their partner, the Bank of England, to control the Middle East and to make it a part of the New World Order. To defend the New World Order, U.S. soldiers will have to kill and die. Arthur Schlesinger, Counselor on Foreign Relations. Military men are just dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns in foreign policy. Henry Kissinger, Counselor on Foreign Relations. Now let's listen to this quote by Robert Reich, a member of President Clinton's cabinet and one of his most trusted advisors. The dirty little secret is that both houses of Congress are irrelevant. America's domestic policy is now being run by Alan Greenspan and the Federal Reserve. America's foreign policy is now being run by the International Monetary Fund. When the president decides to go to war, he no longer needs a declaration of war from Congress. Dr. Carol Quigley, professor from Georgetown University, who was also President Clinton's mentor, said in his book, Tragedy and Hope, the powers of financial capitalism had a far-reaching aim, nothing less than to create a world system of financial control in private hands, able to dominate the political system of each country and the economy of the world as a whole.
And then President Clinton's Deputy Secretary of State, Strobe Talbot, said, in the next century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. All these supposed free trade agreements, NAFTA, GATT, CAFTA, are truly nothing more than the governments of the world and the central banks working together to create a one world government. They are not free trade. These treaties are government managed trade, and they are destroying the American worker. Through these treaties, the bankers are actually beginning to control the laws of the world. The fact is that this relationship between the bankers, the government, and the huge multinational corporations is the very reason why the government no longer enforces its immigration laws. The bankers want a one world government without borders, and the American government is obeying them. If the government was so worried about terrorism, why are they leaving the borders open? But at the same time, telling American citizens they need an ID card with an RFID chip. Osama bin Laden could not come over here and limit your rights or my rights to free speech from search and seizure from all of these elements in the Bill of Rights. Impossible for him to do that. They could never accomplish that on their own. But through our government, they've apparently accomplished that. Look what happened in Europe. The people there voted down the European Constitution wanting each country to stay sovereign. Yet the private central bankers are pushing the governments forward to make this Constitution happen, even though the people voted against it and clearly do not want a world government nor a one European government. Now pay close attention to this quote by David Rockefeller, and you'll understand what is happening in the world today and where the American people are heading as a nation. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subjected to the lights of publicity during those years. But now, the world is more sophisticated and prepared to march towards a world government. The supranational sovereignty of an intellectual elite and world bankers is surely preferable to the national auto-determination practiced in past centuries. David Rockefeller a member of the Council on Foreign Relations actually believes that we would be better off if he and his bank of friends ran the world. Benito Mussolini had a great quote about fascism. He said that fascism should be called corporatism more properly because it's the perfect merger of power between the corporation and the state. That's how we define fascism. And that's what we're seeing here. The media uh, controls the information that a person gets. In various ways, they can make sure that the average American watching the tube or reading the newspaper uh, is going to come out with a certain mindset. He's going to say, this is good, that's bad, and that's all they have to do. You look at the ownership of corporate media in this country. Who owns CBS? Viacom? Who owns NBC? GE? Who owns ABC? Disney? Americans have been taught to expect their salvation from government instead of recognizing government as, a, as the most dangerous threat they'll face in their lives.